Welcome to Research Perch from the Massage Therapy Foundation. Short, practical insights into massage therapy research and how it can benefit your practice. Hello everyone, I'm Robin Anderson, the president of the Massage Therapy Foundation, and welcome to another episode of Research Perch. Today, we're gonna to be talking to one of our case report winners. And this is a topic that really kind of touches my heart a bit, just because when I was a student in massage therapy school, I actually was a student case report winner way back when, when I started in massage school. And so I really believe in this, uh, this project that we do um, and how beneficial it is to students to do these case reports in the, their first sort of forays into research. So with that, I would like to introduce uh, my guest for today, uh, the Silver Award winner for the 2019 Student Case Report, uh, Ms. Amy Frost-Hunt. Amy, Hi, welcome. Hi, Robin. <laughs> so today we're gonna talk about your case report that is entitled um, Effects of Massage Therapy on Multiple Sclerosis, a case report, which was published in the December uh, 2020 ep um, edition of the International Journal of Therapeutic Massage and Body Work. So um, let's start out, Amy, with first, uh, tell us a little about yourself, and then we'll start talking a little bit about this case report that you did. For sure. I'm a registered massage therapist in Edmonton, Alberta. I've been practicing for about two years now, and I'm also a um, acupuncture and Chinese medicine student. Ah, interesting. Well, we'll get to that after we talk to your case or talk about your case report. But um, so tell us, give us a little bit of a background on this case report. What inspired you to do this? So the case study was presented to us when we started the program in our first year at McEwen. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of something we worked towards through the entire process of our schooling. Um, when it came to the semester that we were going to write it, we were kind of just given files. We were given two patients that we then chose which one we wanted to write on um, after doing some research and discussing the topics a little bit. Okay, interesting. So what was it about multiple sclerosis that seemed to be like an interesting topic for case study? I mean, did this help you identify your patient and her suitability for this kind of work for your project? Oh, absolutely. I found that this condition is so interesting because the symptoms vary patient to patient. You can have two people with MS and they present to you completely differently. So I find it's harder to really do studies on conditions like this because it just depends who you're treating. Yeah, I can relate to that. My research study was on rheumatoid arthritis and that has, you know, because it's an autoimmune disease, you know, it has that kind of similar thing. It, it presents differently in different patients. So that's true. So you did have to do quite a literature review um, on multiple sclerosis um, in terms of, so what did you discover in terms of um, what previous research has been done that sort of, how did that lead you to sort of structuring your whole case report, uh, your methods and your measurements of treatment? I found that not a lot of research had been done on the topic at all. Um, some research had been done on Swedish techniques and some research studies had been done on the correlation between massage and exercise, but that's pretty much where the research stopped. There was no research on like range of motion or Golgi tendon organ release or any sort of muscular release um, treatments for this condition. Um, There's also not a lot of research on like um, just what other methods could be used within treatment other than Swedish techniques. So yeah, I kind of just took what she presented with and then found measurement tools that were good on focusing on that specific thing, not relating to MS. Yeah. Well, and you know, that's actually a very logical way to go about things. So there are certain diseases that just, they affect movement function. And, you know, since massage therapy has that effect, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to affect multiple sclerosis as a, yeah. you know, given overarching condition, but rather managing some of the things that present themselves as a result of having the disease. 
Exactly. And sometimes it can just be side effects for some of the other treatments that they're getting to manage the disease as well. So yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from, from doing that. So for our listeners, can you just give us a synopsis of your um, case report? And then we'll talk a little bit more detail about your methods and, and your discovery. So go ahead and give us a bit of a synopsis. For sure. So MS is basically a autoimmune disease that affects the um, we'll call it insulation around the spine. Um, this is called the myelin sheath. Once this degenerates, the nerve impulses don't send the way they're supposed to. Um, so like I said, symptoms from this can be basically anything. Um, my patient presented with fatigue. Um, that was her biggest complaint. She couldn't really do a lot. She could pick one task during the day and that would be the only thing she could do. Um, Secondary to that, her mobility was affected. She walked with a cane. And then she also had edema affecting her left leg. And then she had very little use of her left leg. Mm -hmm. So we decided that her main goal for the treatment was just fatigue and general well-being. And then I wanted to focus more on the edema in her leg and just being able to have her use the leg a little bit more. Um, the assessment measures I used were the... MFIS, which is a Modified Fatigue Impact Scale. It's just a questionnaire I had her fill out at the beginning and end of the sessions just to gauge where her fatigue was at. Um, we used the Time Up and Go test, which just, um, she started sitting, she, I would time her, she walked a certain distance and then come back. We did that a couple times throughout the sessions. And then I also used the figure eight measurement to measure her ankle. And this just measured the swelling. And we took this at the beginning of an, beginning and end of every treatment. Um, so we found that massage was effective in treating her fatigue and her edema. Her, they both decreased. Um, in the research I did, I found I didn't have a lot of results with mobility. Um, it said, based on the results I got, her mobility had uh, worsened. But with other studies, I read that it's not the general case with massage therapy. Massage therapy is typically uh, effective in treating mobility as well. But overall, we found it was effective in treating her conditions and giving her the energy she needed to get through the day. Mm, that's great. Now, for how long did you treat her and for how many sessions did you do? Uh, just uh, one session a week for six weeks. Okay. So maybe um, the issues with mobility might have gotten better had you treated her for a longer period of time. Yes, that's exactly what I had said in my case study as well, is yeah. that it wasn't a very long period of time to really test a lot. Right. Like especially when it's something as chronic as MS and when she's had mobility issues for a while. Sure. Yep. You can't always undo those things that quickly sometimes. It takes, yeah, exactly. takes a little more work. So tell us a little bit about the methods that you used in terms of your individual treatment sessions. I know you mentioned Swedish and you mentioned the fact that, um, you know, that she had edema. So there were, was, what was your like actual methodology for each treatment session? You mentioned that you used the timed up and go test and you used the, um, the fatigue scale, but what about the actual treatment session itself? Were there any particular strokes or approaches and how you framed the session that seemed to be beneficial to the patient? So I started the sessions just with like a typical relaxation treatment. Um, I started the treatments on her back just primarily for comfort and because her lower back bothered her sometimes. Um, and then the rest of the treatment was more focused on her legs. Um, again, mostly just Swedish work. I did some passive range of motion just to get um, some nourishment and nutrients to her ankle and just to get it moving a little bit more. Um, I also did a Golgi tendon organ release on her left leg, which was her affected leg. Um, just to reduce the muscle spasm that was happening. And then from there, I just continued with the relaxation massage and then ended with manual lymphatic drainage. I found ending the session with this um, was really grounding for her. And because the work I was doing was so light in general, I was able to do it at the end. Um, yeah, that was basically the treatment. Right. Well, it sounds like you had a real profound effect on your patient and that's really cool. But mm -hmm. Now, being the researcher or doing the person who's doing the research, what surprised you or didn't surprise you about the outcomes of, that you experienced with this patient? I was surprised at how well the manual lymphatic drainage had worked. This was something I learned not long before I conducted the study. And my faith in it was not great at the time because I'd just learned it. And the results I had were phenomenal. You could see the difference in her ankles by the end of it. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. Just love to have happy patients, right? 
Oh, for sure. <laughs> So, well, that's just been an interesting case report. And so I really appreciate you sharing that with us. But before we go, um, tell us a little bit about your school, McEwen University, and your instructors that mentored you through this whole process. I couldn't have done it without them. They were such a big help. They held sessions for us to basically just set us up how to write a case report. Here's where you start. This is what you should be doing now. This is what you should be doing now. And just kind of guided us through the whole process, which was really beneficial. And they were always there to help. I could email my mentor anytime I needed and she would answer immediately. That's great. That's great. So is there more research in your future, Amy? Um, potentially. I haven't thought about it a ton yet, but it's definitely something that interests me and I would do again. That's great. Well, we want you to keep doing research. Research is great. We love yeah. that. Um, after completing your case report, you know, and finding out that you were, you know, one of our student case report winners, you know, one of the, the uh, one of the criteria is that you have to submit your actual written report to the intern, uh, International Journal of Therapeutic Massage and Body Work. So what was that um, submission process like? And, you know, how did that go for you? What was the experience like? At first, it seemed really intimidating. Um, I didn't really know where to start or what to do but after I read their submission requirements it was actually pretty straightforward um, they kind of walk you through the entire process once you have your case report ready to submit you just send it in and then they send it back and tell you basically what to fix what needs commenting on what they need to know more about anything like that and you just kind of do a back and forth um, it's kind of just like a conversation just very length lengthy I guess <laughs> um but yeah, from there, you just kind of fix what they think needs to be fixed, fix what you want to fix, um, anything that you think could sound better or anything like that, and then just go from there. Yeah. So how many rounds of revisions did you go through? Two rounds of revisions before it was accepted, and then a couple rounds of copy edit revisions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty typical for most research studies. So I've done research since doing my case report as a student, and yeah, that's pretty typical. So it's 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 a tough process, but you learn a lot from it, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm a totally different person after going through this process. It definitely changed my life. Yeah, absolutely. So has it changed your perspective as a massage therapist in terms of how you practice? Oh, absolutely. I think I go into every session now with an intent or a goal for the session. And I don't think I would have that same approach if I hadn't have done this research. That's great. That's great. The thinking practitioner, that's what we want to see people doing as a result of research. And that's what helps us to become evidence-informed practice, uh, evidence-informed massage therapists. After all of this work and you put it through to the IJTMB, um, usually uh, we usually have our case report winners present their uh, research at our uh, the AMTA National Convention. And I know, um, unfortunately, you didn't get to do that last year, did you? No, I didn't. I was supposed to go to Arizona last August, but I was unable to due to the pandemic. Yeah. So are you going to be joining us in Tampa this year? I don't think so. I would really like to, but I'm not really comfortable traveling with the pandemic right now. Understood, understood. Well, we'll at least be able to see your, uh, your poster uh, based on your research, correct? You've submitted that. Yes, I have. That's great. Yep. So that's another feature that as a case report winner, you get the opportunity not only to present your research, um, but also um, have a poster session and dis display a poster. So I would encourage everyone going to AMTA National Convention this year in Tampa to look for uh, Amy Frost Hunt's uh, research on the effects of massage therapy on multiple sclerosis, a case report. So, um, so what are you doing now? I know you mentioned that you are back in school for oriental medicine. Is that correct? Yes, uh, okay. traditional Chinese medicine. Okay. And so are you practicing now? And uh, are you practicing in a specific um, practice setting or? Uh, for acupuncture? Not yet. No, no for <laughs> massage therapy. Yes, I work at, I worked at a clinic here for a couple of years. Okay, great. Well, that's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Amy, and thank sharing you. your uh, case report experience with you, with us. So I just want to remind you that for those students out there that are listening to this research part, our student case report um, 
contest is open every year. Um, and all you have to do is just find a client, find a patient that you might want to try to um, write a case report about, ask your, your instructors and mentors to help you with the process. And it really gives you a nice little taste about how research can be so effective in daily practice. And this is really the foundation for research. Case reports are how some bigger research studies get funded. So it's invaluable to not to have this type of research be completed. And then you definitely learn a lot from it, as I'm sure Amy and I can both attest to yes. being student case report winners ourselves. So, well, again, thank you so much for joining us, Amy. For more information about our student case report contest, you can find that information on our website, massagetherapyfoundation.org. Thank you very much for joining us for our research perch today. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider donating to the Massage Therapy Foundation so that we can continue to bring you this and many other resources to increase your knowledge and improve your practice. Thank you.